Hello, hello, I'm Cheryl here at the Made on Sunday studio and I talk about branding, design and all things creative entrepreneurship here. So if you are building out your dream business right now, then be sure to subscribe to follow along. Now in today's video, I am going to be talking all about how to create digitally fillable PDF forms. These are interactive documents that are great to share with your online audience, whether it be a freebie, a digital product or a form or contract and it really allows the end user the person that you're sending the document to to be able to fill out this form whether it is like you know written text or a checkbox or a drop down uh, and then they'd be able to save it and store it themselves or send it back to you um, for completion now I have created a bunch of these videos in the past. Um, I've talked about how to design them on Canva and then basically submit it into PDF Escape to make them interactive for free. Uh, and this video is basically going to be my 2023 update of how to make and use PDF Escape to make your document interactive. Now recently, PDF Escape actually came up with a huge update and you guys need help. So without further ado, I'm gonna be helping you navigate this new PDF Escape update. So let's get right into it. All right, welcome to my laptop. I am on the PDF Escape uh, website now and um, what you're going to see is this page right here where you can do desktop or free online. Usually I just use free online. So I'm going to click onto that. And then once I get into, um, that page right there, um, I'm going to get, be giving, given the option to upload a PDF to PDF escape. So once you have your document created and export it as a PDF, you're going to then upload it into PDF Escape and it did that pretty quickly. All right, so I am going to zoom in a little bit. You can actually use this right here and zoom in and out or I just literally um, like zoomed in with my uh, laptop. Um, so first things first is you can add form fields um, by clicking on insert and then form field right here. And we are gonna start off with the text functionality. So let's click into select. Um, one thing to keep in mind though is with this new PDF escape update, things are a little bit glitchy. So my number one tip first is to be patient. Things are a little bit slower than it was before. Um, what you're going to see here, once you click on text is you're going to see this little, um, like cross as well as the little rectangle. So if you want to just keep the ranked rectangle shape as is, you can just, um, like match the rectangle to here and then just click on it. But because my rectangle is way bigger here, I'm actually going to use where it, it has the X. I'm going to match the X to the left top hand corner and then drag it out to where my text box ends. And then now it's going to add this text box. So I know a lot of you were struggling with doing multi-line. So if you just leave it as this right now, it's just going to be one big one line text. So your font size right now is going to be like this big. So you don't want that. You want this to be a multi-line paragraph. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna click on this little edit button, which is like this pencil, and you're gonna click gently on your text box. And as you can see, glitch number one is that every time, not every time, sometimes when you click on edit, it will move your box. So all you have to do is just move it back, just give it a second, and you're all good. All right, we got this. <laughs> so now that you have this um, box uh, kind of, selected, you're going to go into this right here, which is, I guess the settings button, um, this wrench, and we are going to make this multi-line. So make sure you check multi-line and this will allow you to have a paragraph, uh, multi-line paragraph, um, text insert here in this section. So you don't have to like, you know, do anything else. Um, don't click on, 
vis uh, don't uncheck visible because you may think that means that you're gonna remove the color box in the background. That's not true. It needs to be visible or else people won't be able to type into it. And then you're going to click on OK. And this will make your text box a multi-line, like be able to be multi-line. One other note I wanted to make at this point is that unfortunately, um, with this new uh, update, you won't be able to change the text font as well as the size. So it's just whatever is like default on PDF Escape, that is what you're going to be allowed to do. So unfortunately, there's no changing of that. Once you're finished with your editing, you're gonna then go back into the hand here, which allows you to move up and down the document. And then we're gonna add the checkboxes. So let's play with checkboxes here. Let's click on checkbox. And then we're going to see how there's like that box here again. So you can, if your box is the same size, you can literally just match the box and just click once and it will create your box. Or if you want to be more exact, you can use the, um, the cross again, match the cross to the top left hand corner and then drag it out. So my box is a little bit bigger. So I'm going to use the custom functionality. All right. So I'm just going to delete this first box right here. So I'm going to click on the edit button again. I'm going to click on this box and I'm going to click on delete this time. So let's go back to adding that last checkbox right here. And I'm going to do this. Perfect. All right. So that looks good. Um, then this section right here, I want to make it um, like you can only check one of the boxes, um, which is I'm going to go down to radio button actually. So I'm going to go on select and again, I am going to drag it out into the space. Sharp should have probably made these into circles instead, but oh well. <laughs> In your design, if you want to do this, you should probably make them into circles and then they would make more sense. And in this scenario, just going to show you what this means. It means that if you click on one of these boxes, um, let me just, then you can only click on one box at a time. So it's going to uncheck the other box. So that is what a radio check box is. Um, so that's going to be this section. Perfect. And then, uh, if you want to have multiple radio boxes, um, like these ones, so let's say there's this question that's only click one, and then there's another section that's like only click one, just make sure that they are all named correctly. So in this case, we're going to click on this one. So this is essentially one group right now. We're going to go on settings again. And right now these will be all named button seven. So you want to make sure that they are all named the same button seven, button seven, and that ensures that they are all part of the same group. So you can name this whatever you like, but it just needs to be named the same. If you have another group, you'll just need to make sure that that other group is all named the same as well. And that will make sure that they all belong into the same radio, uh, what do you, what do they call it? Radio button group. All right. So I hope that was clear. The next section is easy. I'm just going to do uh, text boxes, but one line text boxes. So I'm going to click on select again. I'm going to use my my custom one here. And this again, it is default um, one line text. So just to make sure that that is true, I'm going to click on this with the edit button again, click on this little wrench. And if as long as multi line is not checked, it means that it is single line. So it is all good right now. So these are all correct. Next up is we are going to be adding um, a drop down. So in this section, I'm going to click on drop down 
and I'm going to go to select and right here I'm going to add a drop down. So what I need to do next is I'm going to go to edit again. I'm going to click on this section. Again, the box moved, but that's okay because we can move it back. We're going to go into settings and we are going to add our options. So just for ease, I'm going to put option one. Just want to click on enter and that will go to your next options. Oops, three and option four. Let's say there's four options right now. We're going to click on OK. And what that's going to do is that is going to create this little uh, arrow button right here where when they click on that, there are going to be four options that they can choose from. All right. Next up is we are, or we're going to test out this um, list box, which is the last thing we are going to be testing out with this new update. Um, so instead of it dropping down to show the different options, this will instead show all of the options right away. So I'm just going to add this little box here and I'm going to go and click on this. Sorry, edit, click on this. And then we're going to add our options again. So option one, option two, option three, and option four. And let's see how that looks. So a little bit different from the drop down. So in the drop down, you have to click on this to show the options. But on a list box, uh, it's actually going to show all of the options at once. So you can basically just click on the one that you want. So if all looks good, just double check that everything looks good. We are going to then export our PDF. So I'm going to click on this little button right here, which exports your document. And I'm going to save it into my files here. Um, all right, we got that. So let's just double check that all the fields work. So this is supposed to be our multi line. So let's just test this out. Hello. This is a multi line text, which looks like it's working perfectly. Awesome. And then this section is our check boxes. Oh, by the way, you can change this to checks instead of crosses. So I'm just going to show you that really quickly. If you go into your settings again, so I'm going to click on edit. And I'm going to click on my checkbox and settings instead of a cross, you can do check circle diamond, all the different, um, options. So I'm just going to do star for this one, just to show you what that will look like. So instead of a cross, it will be a star. So I really like that. They still have those options available. All right. Next up is our radio button. So right now, um, only one will be checked. And then, um, one note here that I noticed is if you s export it with the options selected, it will show that as the default. So if you wanted to show nothing like this should be blank and this should be blank, then make sure to like uncheck those things, um, before you start uh, exporting. So there is the drop down function. So now they can choose one of the below. And then there's also this option where they can choose one of one of them in um, the box as well. What did they call it? Called it the list box. Yep. Yeah. So they can now click on one of these and that will be one of their options as well. Just make sure to remind whoever you are sending this to, to save it and open it in a PDF reader, because if they are viewing the document uh, on a browser, then they won't be able to save it because they're opening it on the cloud. So make sure if you want this option, um, you want your, you know, whoever's receiving this to be able to fill it in and save it into their documents you should remind them to actually like save the document, tell them to save the document within their documents, not open it on a browser, um, and then open it, uh, with any kind of PDF reader and just tell them to save. You can do, 
do command S or go to file and save. And then that will be saved in their documents with um, all of this populated. So another few tips there. I know there were some questions about that um, in my previous video. So I just wanna make sure that I always make it clear how to export um, and how my users should download these documents and save the documents afterwards so they have a copy of it with, you know, with all of their things typed in. <laughs> all right, so I hope that was clear and I hope that was helpful. Um, it definitely is a bit tricky to use with the new PDF Escape. I think it just requires a little bit of practice. The good thing is it is still entirely free to use. So um, we should be grateful that, uh, you know, there aren't a lot of free interactive tools out there for making your PDFs uh, fillable online. So while it is still free, um, we just need to be a little bit more patient. Um, it is a little bit, um, you know, harder to use than it was before, but um, I hope this video really helped you solve some of those issues that you had. And that is it, you guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. And if you did, be sure to like this video and subscribe for more videos like this. Now, if you are in the stage of actually just designing the document on Canva right now, you might be interested in this video coming up. I would highly recommend checking it out. You are basically gonna be designing this document with me together on Canva. So I guess I will see you in that upcoming video. See you there. Bye. <laughs>